Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of our series Revisiting Residencies. Last October we started with the series where we were revisiting Bucharest uh, before Sprach and this time we are joined by North Macedonian author Prosina Parmakovska who is going to revisit in her digital essay the Bulgarian capital of Sofia. So welcome, Prasina. Uh, it's great to have you here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Oh, it's great having you. And maybe what we should already say or give away to the audience is that your residency was a bit unusual in the sense that it wasn't actually a residence stay. It became more of a residence journey. Probably important to know is that you started your residency in uh, March 2020. Right. And I think just by giving away this, um, yeah, this just this tiny detail, I think it's very obvious to people what might have happened. But we won't give away too much. But picking up of this idea of journey, um, I want to frame my first question to you. But first, I want to just say something that came to my mind when I was reading your essay and also yeah, basically was reading uh, about this journey you made. So mm -hmm. this is a book that a friend of mine sent me, uh, I think a couple of months ago. It's actually a Spanish book called Manifiesto por la Lectura, basically meaning Manifesto for Reading. And in it, Irene Vallejo kind of defends the act of writing as well as reading. And in it, in this essay or Manifesto, there's also a really nice quote by the writer Marguerite Jusenar, in which he explains the, this wonder, this miracle that happens when we learn to read. Because just this as well is a journey we take. There's these 26 letters in some cultures, it's characters, or there's more letters that we kind of start with. There's these 26 letters that we see black on white, and slowly out of these, whole stories are created and then in reverse they then also change us and I thought it was very very nice this idea that like you know it starts with just like these these little squiggles on paper and then it becomes so much more it really becomes a world of itself so Prosina my question to you is actually how did your journey start first as a reader and later as a writer and who were the big inspirations grandparents, your parents, who was it to like made you a reader and later also a writer? Yes, um, I was actually a child when I started to write first poetry, <laughs> but soon I, I found myself more in writing prose. Uh, so I was in um, elementary school when I started to, to write this prose and uh, that's a time when I was reading a lot actually. Uh, soon when I was growing up, I, it was clear to me that I want to, to study literature and to become uh, a writer. But uh, from this perspective, also my, my love for books, I can relate to my, uh, my childhood and my family and my parents who, who had a huge library. Which I think we can see behind you, or <laughs> or part of it. <laughs> yes, part of it. Uh, <laughs> and my father, who who uh, this is cliche, but he was uh, reading me stories before I was going to sleep. Uh, it's a precious memory for me, of course. And actually, uh, his choice of the stories was amazing. It's a uh, uh, Macedonian folklore fantasy, which is really amazing. Literature. That sounds very interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting for reading even now or in the future or in any time in uh, period in life. So that's how I started. Uh, you said, well, first to, to listen, then, then to read, and in some point to, to write. So now that you are in that moment of actually writing, you are the author of actually four novels. The latest came out uh, last year. And uh, I think the third one, Countdown, which you presented 
when was it, in 2019 at the Leipzig Book Fair, has just been published in Serbian translation. So what I also liked in your essay is that you talked about that every, every book, when you write it, is also a journey in itself. Like every book is different. It's a completely different writing process. So tell us, for example, a bit about this uh, writing process for Countdown, because the structure of the novel is very peculiar to some extent, because it really is a countdown. So tell us a bit of maybe about this novel and what the writing process was around it. Yes, right. Uh, and I'm hap very happy that uh, it was translated in Serbian. It's first translation of uh, any of my books in Serbian um, in the publishing house uh, Gradac by uh, support of Traduki and translated by Milena Ilic. Uh, and that's very uh, important for the book because um, we are neighbor countries. And I think that the issues and the, the problems the whole context and reality can be easily uh, recognized by, by the readers there. Uh, considering the structure and the writing, this is a novel in three parts. It's about a young woman married to a man who later shows signs of mental illness. And uh, in a huge part, the novel treats the questions and the, the treatment of uh, the mental illness by the, by the partner, by the family, and uh, finally by the society is a small and conservative environment. Besides that, uh, it treats the issues of infidelity, abortion, and uh, many other things put in a very uh, determine precise reality and uh, context. The, the title is very important in the, is a, is an as, aspect of reading because this countdown happens in, uh, in two levels. The first one, that's a literal countdown uh, in the process of uh, anesthesia before the surgery, before the abortion, uh, how it counts 10, 9, till the end, till one. Uh, but the second and uh, um, more important level is uh, countdown as a, a retrospective of her life, of uh, the, the female uh, main character life and her fears, her, uh, her experience, her joys, the death of her mother. It's actually this countdown uh, in final point is some kind of deep and inner facing with uh, life facing with her with herself what about the writing process itself how long did it take you to to write a countdown did you also yeah. have a countdown for that <laughs> you were like first <laughs> second yes uh, the, yes uh, the writing of uh, any novel is very it's a journey for itself it's very interesting process for this one uh, it took uh, one year and uh, few months from um, this one year and uh, I, I think six months I was uh, uh, isolated, uh, especially uh, when I come to this point uh, when I'm finishing the novel. I finished in Skiatos. I was 10 days in Skiatos and uh, that's where uh, I finished the, the, the literal end of the book and the, the last uh, 20 pages. Skipping forward, and again, we don't want to give too much away from your uh, of your essay because it's a really kind of like basically your whole residency turns into um, a bit of a road trip, and I really enjoyed reading it because you kind of get to know a lot about Sophia and your in the end very brief stay there, and then we kind of like tumble along on your journey uh, back to Skopje. <laughs> but uh, this is for the readers to discover. But the most important thing is that during this residency and during the residency stay that then turned into a residency journey, you also finished your uh, latest novel called On the Way Back. On the Way Back. So try not to give away too much of the essay. Tell us a bit, just a little bit, how um, 
basically what happened in March 2020 then influenced also the novel? Because from what I understand, it had quite a big impact on uh, on how uh, the story evolved. Yes, yes. Uh, first, it was a great experience for me. It started as a usual residence <laughs> uh, in Sofia. Um, it was for me um, a chance to meet Sofia because I haven't uh, been there more than three or four days. Now uh, it happens for me to stay uh, three weeks in this situation. Sofia is an amazing city with huge green areas, beautiful buildings and uh, friendly people. And I really enjoyed all of that. The first two weeks of March last year, um, when, the, when everything seems to be still normal because the pandemic uh, uh, hasn't been spread in Bulgaria in this time, but in the third week, uh, everything uh, started to change very, very fast. In a few days, everything was closed, uh, except uh, supermarkets and pharmacies. And uh, I decided to stay even in this situation because uh, the writing was going uh, well. Uh, I used to go in some of the parks with my laptop and write there. But after the third week, uh, also the parks uh, were forbidden. So I um, didn't have uh, any other choice but uh, to go home. Uh, and this is the moment when my adventure actually <laughs> started for real. <laughs> uh, because uh, the day when I decided to, to go home, uh, our government uh, made a decision for uh, everyone who is coming from abroad to go in this uh, public uh, quarantine. <laughs> Uh, and a few hotels were uh, used for this purpose, and I ended up in one of these hotels. Uh, for and if I understand correctly, this is then the reason why apparently the I think the last chapter of your novel is now called Quarantine, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> which I yes. guess was not the plan initially. Initially, no, no, it wasn't. <laughs> plan. Uh, even the, the story was uh, different, uh, and uh, the novel was. Uh, very different, and I can say that these uh, events uh, had a huge influence in the uh, in the writing process and the, the novel as final product. Uh, so so uh, this uh, two weeks in this hotel was something like a continuation of my residence in uh, in uh, Sofia. Uh, so um, from this perspective, it wasn't bad at all. Uh, I, Yes, and um, in uh, this novel, the second part especially, uh, for the first time in my life, I implement uh, my stories uh, in the story of uh, my novel, uh, mm -hmm. in a way that I share my story with my main character, who happens to be a, an, uh, uh, a man who, who left uh, home, left everything, and mm -hmm. after uh, a while he soon, he realized that uh, home is where he belongs, home is where he's happy and he wants to be. Uh, but uh, when he decides to, to go home, everything, uh, I mean, that's impossible. And that's already yeah. sounds familiar. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> that's the moment when my, my story uh, started. Became to... part of the, the, the story oh. of the novel. Oh. oh, it sounds very interesting. So maybe also for you out, everyone um, an excerpt of the novel will also or is already also published below the digital essay so check it out so yes this last year or months have been like just this bubble of upheaval and chaos so I hope you found a bit of calm and steadiness and peace in this time so I just wanted to ask you, what are, is there anything you're writing currently or what, uh, is there any new project that's um, in your mind? And is also, what are your reading suggestions? Like what are the books you discovered in this past year that kind of help you, you know, just survive everything that's happening? <laughs> yes. Uh... Um, well, first, I, I have to say that um, my novel, On the Way Back, was published uh, 
five months ago, I think, here in Macedonia, or six months. And uh, from my experience, um, I need one year uh, after I finished a uh, novel to start something new. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that's a year where I, I uh, clean myself from that story, that uh, characters and everything that happens in the last novel. And I open the doors for something new. And from my experience, one uh, year has to pass before I, I have a new idea and then start to, to write something new. So I usually use that year for, for reading. Uh, I read now everything that I couldn't read while I was writing the novel. Uh, so mm, recently I uh, read uh, this book uh, that I wanted to read a long time ago, uh, Adam in uh, Paradise by Carlos Fuentes. Um, it's also interesting in this, in this period I used to uh, reread some books that uh, I have read a long time ago, uh, like uh, the Black Book from Orhan Pamuk, which uh, is my favorite uh, writer, one of my mm -hmm. two, three most favorite writers. So um, I also read uh, that book uh, one month ago, a few books from uh, New Macedonian uh, production. I started also to, um, to read or at least to try uh, to read some Bulgarian writers in Bulgarian. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> uh, yes, is. yes, it was a huge challenge a challenge for me, but I had to try. And uh, first, I, first I started uh, with, um, I, I can't remind the title, but uh, this is right, the writer Peter Denchev, mm -hmm. uh, my friend. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, I also used the, the time of uh, residence and after that to, to uh, meet to some Bulgarian movies because I haven't watched them before. And I had some great uh, suggestions and I uh, watched a few Bulgarian movies and yeah. one TV show. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. suddenly time flies. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you so much again, Prosina. Um, everyone, I hope you delve into the essay that is now online. Before we let you go, if after you've read the essay, you're like, okay, what else is there about Sophia? Recently, I think just about last year, this book was published by Bulgarian author Vesela Yakoba. And it deals about the capital of Bulgaria, but actually, oh, no, capital of Bulgaria, the Sofia, but it actually looks at, you know, the nooks and crannies on the outskirts that are not quite, you know, in the center. She looks at the peripheries of, uh, of Sofia. So this came out in Slovene translation by uh, Luz Literatura and, um, of course, supported by Traduki. What else? There's also uh, Alex Spatov's book, Life from Sophia, oh, which uh, uh, is I mean, also available in English, if you want to read that. It's probably quite a bit of a rambunctious ride. It's a collection of short stories. Something that's maybe not so on the nose, where Sophia is not really a character, but more background, is um, Angel Igor's Edizantmütigen, which came out by Eta Falak, I think, one or two years ago and received many accolades. So this one is also a good read. And yeah, there's other great Bulgarian authors, of course, that you can, um, you can, you can pick up and read, for example, Gospodinov, of course, and many others. So yeah, thank you for being with us. I hope you enjoyed this quick talk with me and Frusina. Read the essay and more importantly, hmm, when will we meet again? Well, Next time we will go to Belgrade. So stay tuned. And yes, thank you so much again, Frosina. Thank and you. And everyone, I so. hope you make it through this time as well. And yeah, stay well and stay safe. See you next thank time. You. See you.